just the, 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 the final things that I did last time on the heavy work. Uh, and if heavy work effective theory. So let me just uh, start from the Peragrandian, but if we arrive to this part uh, here. And, and the famous is why is why is 
But before doing anything, it is convenient to uh, discuss the normalization of the state. So this is what the tricky point that I skipped the other day. So usually, you are user to the, supposing if I have a mechanism M with some heavy port inside and moment on P, uh, you are used to the standard normalization where, say, M, Q, P, Standard, uh, this is the standard relativistic normalization of the state, okay, which is manifestly uh, relativistic invariant. In our case, it's convenient to use a different normalization so to define a new type of, of state, which I define uh, here as M and V, okay. Depends on the 
like dynamics, so for instance, if I have a, a heavy state, I mean, if I have a, a hub with a strange quark or with a deep quark, it will be different, it you know, depends on the, on the mass of the line. See, and finally, on the other hand, here, uh, uh, I expect here the correction to the, to the kinetic energy from the devotion of the heavy work in the system. And this is the thing that we can evaluate using this Lagrangian here. So, with delta n squared will be, if you want, by, by, by construction, it's uh, minus the matrix element of our effective. Basically, energy given by the, the, the extra is there. Okay. Um, and so clearly, we have, picking up the theories, we have these two terms here. And so this will be, in general, given by two terms. The terms that okay, it's conventionally called lambda 1, which is the expectation value of this operator here, and the term, which is, which will, depending on the spin, okay, so. Let me call it generically like this, dj times lambda 2, where this dj has a different value okay, for a meson, for a spin zero meson, like uh, d or d, okay, in this case as, as value 1, in the other case as value 3 for, for a spin 1 meson. So this star, this star, okay, it's just a Because this depends now on the spin of the heavy quark. So, I do not do any, any complicated calculation, but I just want to give you a feeling of uh, uh, how this uh, expansion works. You see, clearly this parameter is something that we cannot determine. So, if you want this, you can take them as uh, a non perturbative quantities that we cannot determine uh, from this principle. However, this general decomposition is what is dictated by, by, by the expansion. And so, we can look at, compare with the experiment to see if this expansion makes sense. So in particular, the, the, the observation is that the binding energy, so there is a binding energy which should be the same in a system with the different quark uh, uh, masses and also different uh, spin of, of, of the behavior. And finally, we have the correction that depends on the spin, which on the other hand <laughs> appears at the one of our uh, uh, so. so let's give a, 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 a look at okay, just to give you a feeling of how this is going to work. I have some, some numbers to check. So if we compute the, the mass difference of the BS meson, so the BS meson is a, a scalar zero, is a sort of scalar meson made of, of B and S4, okay, minus the mass of the, the BD meson, okay, which is a, 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 a spin zero meson made with the B and the port. And here, I put this, because of this formula, should be lambda S minus lambda D, okay, and it turned out to be plus right, so, right, D, okay, uh, and finally, this is. 90 plus minus 3. Uh, if you want, this is, you see, it's not something of order that is actually it's related, bit, not surprising, to something of the order of the stage of mass. Now, if we look at, okay, so if you want this, if you want this, a determination of this parameter. Now, what is it is to look at the analog difference for dimensions. Okay, we now we replace. The heavy pork okay, from B to C, and what we find is that this is uh, 99. So you see, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, approximation. So, really, the C pork behaves as a heavy. So, you know, the, the, the difference between these two masses is huge. Okay? This, is a, this is a mass which is about uh, 5. GB, this is a mass which is about 2 GB, okay, but, but the, the mass difference, okay, due to the change of the light core, is exactly this. 
let's say, up to a small correction, which is exactly what you would expect from the scale indicated by the end of the structure. Even more interesting is uh, uh, what the difference in the, in the <coughs> mass between the D star, so this is a case, D, D system, <coughs> but uh, with spin 1. Minus the B, so this is the well, this is a spin one, and this is a spin one. Okay. And we consider the mass difference square, but the mass difference square okay, is clearly two times n delta n. So I, I multiply the delta n term by, by, by n2, so this will be exactly the term related to <coughs> correction, okay? And then since I consider the case where I have exactly the same any port and exactly the same spectator, I cancel this part here and I get just this part here. And uh, so what we get is it's and if one look at now the So really the splitting we want, this is just the, the splitting due to the, to the shift uh, of the spin of two systems which are very different in the in total mass, it's to a very good accuracy the same and to a good accuracy something over, over the line of CT squared, which is what we would expect. Okay, from, uh, so and, and not only, you see, in this way we also determine explicitly on this matrix cell. So, we determine even just looking at the spectroscopy the matrix element of the operator that I answered that was the spin operator sigma times p. Okay, because that's exactly what we selected because we're, of course we can have different we cancel this piece, we cancel that piece, we cancel also this one which is independent and we select only this part here. So we have a one. From data we have the determination of uh, these uh, these uh, so you have here elements and masses therefore? No no because uh, because M Okay, and delta, this, this m squared is, uh, okay, is m0 squared plus 2 m0 delta n. So I plus. So the, I cancel this piece here because I'm, I'm taking the, it's the mass squared. Okay, so when I do the difference, okay, this, this part drops out so that I have 2. So I select exactly the. the the, uh, the there. So this is <coughs> okay. So this is really I mean to show how actually not okay in, in this case you see that the heavy core okay, is a char. Okay. So in principle if the char do not behave as a heavy state, then you would expect here something very different. I mean, there was no reason to be like the P, and the fact that it is like the P is simply because we are, uh, because they have work, and because here we have correction which are ordered, and this is one plus correction which are ordered under the CD divided the mass of, of the chart. And so this is a small correction. Yeah. What if we try to uh, create strange quark as a habit? That doesn't work. It, it, uh, doesn't work. Uh, you, you, you can check yourself. Check it if you take the K star and the K on. It doesn't work. Uh, so well. So it's, it's, it will be too much different from this one. Exactly. It's actually you know, it's, a, it's an older one. Which is the thing. Not surprising because indeed the. To some approximation, actually, the strange is more it's below on the UCD rather than, than the uh, bigger on the UCD. So, indeed, if we okay, you see over this trend, the, the mass of the K star okay, minus okay, to a good approximation is the mass of the K star. Because this is a shadow scalar meson that 
has a mass that is linear in the stretch work mass because it essentially goes to boson if you limit when the, the, the mass goes on. In the limit when the stretch mass goes to zero, this goes to zero, but this not, and the gains of the other one, the PCD. And actually, this is about uh, 1 GB, so you get something which is basically a factor of 2 different. Okay. Indeed, okay, I guess maybe this is, this is not. So really, there are, there are two interesting regimes of QCD. Okay, so we have the G and the C, whose mass is much larger than the band of QCD. We have the D and the R, whose mass is much smaller than the band of QCD. Okay. So for these two course, for sure, it's a piece of the mass of the atom. But for these two courses, it's an excellent operation to work at the limit where this mass is a field. Then, of course, in this limit, we have other symmetry. We have current symmetry. We can derive other things, uh, character things, or another effective theory that works at the limit of, of, of that quarters. The strange is in the, somehow in, in between. So it's not in the third product situation. Actually, it's, it's closer to this limit than, than to this one. Okay. Also, the sharp okay, is not really much bigger than the field, but turn out to be significantly closer to this limit than it also depends on, on the specific process that one is, is considered. Of course, for, for mass, for the spectroscopy, that, that's what we uh, find. But in, in most cases, it's like it. Okay? <laughs> so now let's come to the most interesting thing that is the, the, the Isler Wise formula. So this panel is trying to. Okay. A 
which is something that can depend only on the product DV prime. Because this is the only kinematical invariant, the only scalar invariant that in this uh, ah. Okay? It's just a trivial kinematical invariant. Now, so it's a function of DV prime, okay, because v squared is 1, v prime squared is 1. So the only, the only non trivial uh, scalar combination I can make with the two momenta here, with two velocities, is dv prime. Now, the, the key observation, if you remember, is to go to the limit that v equals to v prime, because there we have a conservative current. So let's first demonstrate that we have a conservative current with the limit that v equals v prime. So you see here, we have two, two issues here. One, what I put here is a prime, stands for the flavor of the state, okay? While the other, the other label is the velocity, okay? So here I want to evaluate the, the derivative of this current. Okay. Now with the same velocity of the different flavor. And now, you remember here I can insert uh, this slash on both sides, simply because of this relation. So this is then I have the anti-commutator of the commutator with this slash that gives me d mu. So this is equal to okay. And then this is not in that that is part. Okay, it's this the d dot d applied to Instead of A, it's called 
psi dentro, sono le punto di psi of 1, because we are in the limit of same velocity, ok? Dobbiamo disegnare più di zero, ok? Eh, ok, and then I have to divide by the normalization of the state. Well, if you see this, really reconstruct the normalization of the state, ok? This, this denomination of the state here was just a function, ok? So this is uh, 2 pi cube, the delta function is equivalent to the, to the d3x uh, uh, integral, and the 2d0 was there in the denomination, and so to get that result, I need a c. Okay, so sorry for this yes, slope notation that I divide infinite is but okay. Clear the normalization of two states is infinite uh, uh, if I if I don't uh, uh, consider the, if I if I don't get it on the Okay, so finally I must conclude that this psi of one is equal to one. Again, plus one and one. Alright. So what we have found is that this hadronic matrix element is uh, given by a universal function which is independent of the mass of the state, which is called C of the prime P, which also has the, has the property that it's one. Actually, one can demonstrate that actually exactly at the point one, this correction are one of them two squares, or even even smaller, because there is no operator generating one, uh, one of the linear correction. And so this is really a very one just demonstrate this again, just considering the, 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 the theory with the one and the correction. So it's a very powerful thing because you see this is really a non-perturbative object. Then of course, if we want to evaluate, the, if you want to go to the, to the standard uh, notation, so the standard notation. It's, it's this one, okay? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. Uh, this is usually decomposing this way, so it's an f plus of q squared, d plus times u plus f minus of q squared. This structure is what Lorentz invariant tells. Okay, Lorentz invariant tells that it gives you a two form factor, and we have this two the structure. Then you simply equating the two, and then now expressing d and d in terms of these states using the, the square root of uh, m that I put you before, one find the, okay, the, 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 the slightly strange structure that is this one uh, here. Yeah, it's just a You just have to, to, to express the moment in terms of the velocity and then the, the, the realization of the state and you find that it's this result. Of course, you spend this respect to factor and then this sum. Of course, you can express Q squared in the context of the classic. So, you see, we, we got the full lean dependence on the masses of the core of this form factor. Okay, and what can go on can compute other matrix elements and so on. 
just what we're dealing with is the decision of the simplest case, which is uh, this one. To show you the part. So really can even do an expansion in power of whenever I one of another input is understood is an expansion in power of Lambda D C D divided by the mass of these uh, heavy work which turn out to be the other there. <coughs> okay, at the present here, so then we can change it. interesting also to show you that see, this generic tool which are effective theory is really a powerful tool you can apply it in a very different system we, we apply it here theory is, is a non relativistic effective theory so it's a system which is valid to describe the dynamics of a work inside the header at a given velocity so clearly it's a specific thing but still the, the basic principle is exactly the same okay now let's go to That is what I want to discuss. Uh, want to discuss uh, <laughs> you already had some lecture on, on uh, electrogenesis, right? No? Yeah. You should have actually. Keep this here. Okay, but, but I think uh, we, if you want, we can do it maybe at the end. Uh, uh, but uh, this is not what I want to discuss. So uh, let's do for some. More basic stuff, okay? So just discuss uh, about the genome masses. So, if you remember uh, the you got interaction with the electron sector. So, uh, the first day is uh, we, we concentrated on the four, but of course I also brought down the uh, you got interaction for the electron, which is this one. So, let's do it first with the, so, 
with the, without extending the field content. And there is a way to do it without extending the field content. Uh, why? Well, as you know, we can have a different type of masses for Fermi's field. We have Dirac masses and Mayer masses. Here, in particular, we have a, 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 a Dirac master. So let me remind you here that the, you see, the, the S2 structure is the point of the L bar H, which is nice to see in red. Sorry. You should tell me if I write too small, OK? This is a nice to see in red, so I, I contract this. Is, this is a double, this is a double, but I contract it to make an issue to single it. But it's not, on the other hand, it's not a single from the point of view of a hyper charge, because this field is hyper charge plus one. Uh, it's actually L is hyper charge um, minus one and a half, so this is L bar, so this is plus one, but then it was the minus one from uh, the. So, if you want to the hyper charge of this, of this guy here, it's uh, plus one. Now, there is clearly another contraction, which is uh, L transpose H, which is, uh, well, here I should do it. Let me do it uh, as, a, as a difficult in the notes on the solution. Okay. 
And so we get a mass depth of the Nodino. So the, the bus of the Nodino, I like and it's a minor master. It's a symmetric matrix. Okay. Again, this transpose and division element is just, just to, to take care of the not to forget complete about the direct structure. Okay. It's a symmetric uh, mass matrix. And it's, it's a pseudo invariant. It's a pseudo invariant because this is a pseudo invariant, this is a pseudo invariant, and it's also invariant under the chart because this is zero, this is zero. Okay. Now, one main question is why don't we do that also for the other field? Okay. So for the, for the up core, the down core. We can do exactly the same type of contraction also for the up core, the down core. However, in all the other cases, the other charge is different from zero. Okay, still, because L is the only field that is so happy to have exactly the same, uh, actually the opposite other charge of the X. Okay, and so, as I can see, you see that since the structure appears twice, okay, it's not the data here, if I have an other charge one here, then I have a other charge two, this is going to be divided with other charge. On the other hand, the fact that I have other charge zero, you know, it's fine. Indeed, any other mass are <laughs> for all the other fields in the, in the model by a higher charge that is by the electric charge. Okay? If you're a master for the electron for any charge and particle by the it. And this is intrinsic in the in the structure of the of the minor mass. My mass is, is a is a master of the type. So clearly if this field is charged. As a charge, this operator is charge 2. Okay? So this is charge 2, this operator is. So my answer is allowed only if, uh, if we uh, have, field, uh, have zero charges. Only one, actually, in this case, we don't have zero charges, but the charge is compensated by the Higgs. Okay? And only the Higgs, I mean, only the Higgs of the electron double, we can compensate the charge with one Higgs. Okay? If you want, in the case of the other, other fermions, we can write other terms of that type, but then we have to put more things to the compensation charges. Of course, the other question is uh, are, are, are you disturbed by the fact that this is a dimension 5 operator? I, I, I hope uh, not. <laughs> uh, it's a dimension 5 operator, but so what? So it's just that in the spirit of effective theory, of course. Discussed the other day, this is just a okay. first term if you want that in a, in a, a expansion of physics eventually beyond the southern order. So, we are just a, this is, a, is a, an irrelevant operator, but actually, it's the first relevant operator for material masses. So, we have to keep it exactly like we, we kept it when we did the integration of the dust in the perfect you can interact exactly in this expansion. Uh, let me open now a parenthesis. Okay, so. Since we, so clearly to, to describe the general masses, we have to go beyond the standard model. And, uh, and so, right now I visit the, in the effective theory approach to visit the standard model and say, well, I don't know what's possible in the standard model, it would be something else, something heavy, because I have not seen it. This something heavy, after I integrate out the heavy bit of thing, will generate the number of this type. For sure, if there's something heavy, respect. The standard model gives symmetry, it is okay to respect the standard model symmetry, so it's there. An interesting question is how many other dimension 5 operators are there in the, in the theory? Do you know? No, no. No, this is the only one. This is the, uh, this is the only dimension 5 operator. Okay, for those who don't know, let me give you a, a, it's a very simple proof. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> so in the standard model, we have the following field, the gauge field, so we have the strength tensor of the gauge field, the fermions, and the Higgs. Okay, this is this is dimension two, this is dimension one, and this is dimension one. And so if we combine, we can combine all this operator with the derivative, okay, which is dimension one, 
Okay, and try to list all the operators that we can write. And we want to do it in a gauge invariant way. Okay. So it's, it's very simple. So let's consider the gauge sector. The gauge sector, so the pure gauge, the pure gauge we have power so many. And then the ratio two, so here it is here. Okay. I can put, if I put, of course, I can put the, the derivative as dimension 1, but even in terms of, of, of the dimension, okay? I can put derivative, but I cannot put one derivative, otherwise, I have a lot of same so I can only put a couple of derivatives, so I can get a lot of same The x is the same because since the x is charged under SU2, I need at least two x to make something which is SU2. Non è su un singlet, so I have to go to a structure of the time to the pure x, I have to go to a structure of this type, and then I can insert as many derivatives as I want, but again, the number of derivatives I insert is always even, so it will be something like this, plus again d mu to n, even. No way. So clearly, the only sector where I can hope to do something odd in terms of dimension is the, is the sector of fermions. Now, I can only have, if I want to stay below dimension 6, I can put at most two fermions. Okay, because clearly this has already dimension 3. Uh, if I, no, if here. If I have two, two fermions at dimension 3, and then of course I have to put at least, they have to put an even number of fermions to be the same value. If I put them two, it's a dimension 3. If I put them four, it's dimension 6, so I'm already above dimension 5. So when I have this, I have the following type of, of contraction. I get this one. Okay, here I can be left, left, or right, right. I get this one, and then I have this one. So clearly this is, these are from dimension 3, but then this requires a derivative to be a lot of simple, this is actually to the single derivative is the, is the, is the kinetic term. So it's even, and then if I combine with this other field again, it will be even. This one requires a x to be, uh, because this will be the left right necessary left right structure, so it requires a x to be a total So again, this to Okay. This one is the only one which is off. Okay. And so finally, the only dimension 5 operator that I can pick are operator with 5 separate psi with x's, but then, as we discussed, the only one which is fully invariant under the human charge is that. So that's it. Game over, there is only this dimension 5 operator. And so, in a sense, it's very nice that. Uh, the first operator that we can write in the, in the dimension expansion is the one we can write to the number of assets. That one is the first clear evidence of physics behind the sun. However, it's also very depressing if you not, know, because the other masses are very small. So the, if this coupling is over the one, like all the other coupling of the model, then uh, this scale is very heavy. It means that we can never see anything else. However, there are, there are way out to, 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 to this problem. We will see. Uh, <coughs> okay, so this is the, uh, the uh, general discussion for the dimension 5 operator. So, of course, uh, as an example, I mean, uh, let's discuss the case where we add arrangement uh, neutrinos. Okay? So, clearly, another way, which you see is not even an alternative, is to do like for the other fermion, so to introduce a kind of pattern. So if we add the neutrinos, we have a, 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 an extra a total coupling, which is uh, okay. I can do exactly like uh, I, I did for, for the port. So if I introduce, but you see this is let me stress one more. This is an extension of the sum. So that in the sum there is no arcane So here and now Extending the model, I add three new degrees of freedom. It's a very long This is much more minimal extension. I just add one operator. Here I add three more degrees of freedom. 
But now, once we put this, nobody, I'm sorry, there is no reason, no symmetry reason, not to have a minor and master for this guy, which now is a dimension 3 over there. Because this field has zero charge, and this is hyper charge 0 and S2 charge. Singlet and SO2, because this construction is already a, a singlet, okay, and SO2 is already singlet and the upper charge, so this is a, a total singlet from the point of view of the sum of the field. So, being a total singlet, I can write also this master here. So, you see the complication as well. If one would think, okay, let's add an alternative neutrinos. But if I add an alternative neutrinos, then I immediately also have to give them a mass. Okay? And actually, this mass it would be the first mass. That has nothing to do with the mechanism of electric symmetry breaking because this uh, is not the electric symmetry, this over here is not the electric symmetry. So then, it's very natural to think that this mass is heavy. Okay. If this mass is heavy, then we begin to get out of the dependent field, and not to surprise me, there are exactly these operations, simply from a diagram of this type. Okay. Here, then the you have the previous exercise to do it, and what you will do is that if you S is a relative, this is the standard notation. I mean, sorry, still insisting using direct spinners, and so the, the, the attendance in a mass is indicated here. So this is right. So if you compute this diagram, you want to integrate out the heavy attendance in so what you generate is that your GIJ you generate exactly the structure. It's, it's uh, obvious uh, because indeed the, 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 the contraction is something so H, H, C, and then just I, sigma root H. Okay, so this is exactly the same, it's basically the transpose of, of the conjugate of that operator there. And so, what we generate is, uh, is a term which is Y nu transpose Y divided by. Right, so this scale lambda is what is associated to this uh, end line. Okay. Plus, of course, you, you can have correction if you put here the rest of it with W and so on. The first order, that's what you get. Uh, and so you see, if in the limit, I mean, so if, you, if we add the tendon neutrinos, and if the neutrinos are heavy, then all what would, it's exactly equivalent to, to treat the neutrino mass with the with the uh, uh, mass operator. There is no, no difference. If they are not uh, if they are not heavy, okay, then we really have a, a, a system a, a, a of the system. And generically we will have a a, a, a neutrino mass point. Generically, what we do what we is that we have a linear mass matrix which has the following form. So we, we have the Dirac masses, okay, which give, so this is a, in the left right basis, okay. So we have the attended mass, which is its end right, and then we have the left right masses, which, um, which are y nu v, what's going to do? And actually here is zero if I if I don't put by hand this operation. Okay, so and, and then you recover again. So in, in, in this limit, you see that if I, if I, the determinant of this matrix is just uh, uh, is That uh, in the limit where m r is much bigger than b gives the, 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 the two again value, one is y 
you sort of you can treat this as a, as a perturbation and you get that this is the is the big eigenvalue and, and when the small eigenvalue is the product of these two so determinant divided by, by the big eigenvalue and that's exactly what uh, what, uh, what yeah, the mass and if you remember the formula of the masses is exactly this one now where I basically replace it lambda by MR and G by by that gamma. So clearly, it doesn't. The most general case, okay, if we also include the endogenous, is I mean, this entry maybe is, is not zero as a, as a tiny component, which is this one. Uh, so you can put it or not put it, but in any case, you generate the determinant masses which are available of this square divided by, by the scale. So the only case which is non. Uh, it's different, it's the case where the latinos are light. If the latinos are less light, really then we have six light between the three of the theory, the three latinos the and the three latinos that have a mass matrix of this type. But, but then the latinos are total single, so we should see, as we have so far, we really have no evidence because but since there is a mixing between the latinos and the latinos, the latinos if this mixing, okay, if, if the attendant is uh, it's slight, uh, that implies that at some point the attendant neutrino can carry okay, mix and becomes a attendant neutrino which is terrat and the point of view of the standard model, so we should see some state that do not interact okay, with the standard model field. So these are called the sort of standard neutrinos, and so far we don't have that. There's a long discussion if there is a tiny component, but we don't have clear evidence for this. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, in my opinion, you know, most people, is, since this mass is, is not protected by any symbol, there is no reason to think this mass is light. Why should it be light? I mean, this mass can be very heavy, for instance, in modern gravity So if you think that there is something that completes the standard model, this mass is naturally heavy, okay, because it's not related to, to the Higgs and the value, so in that limit, we. That's the way how we, you know, we generate this secret this Okay. okay. So in the last part, let's see what, what uh, <coughs> how we determine this this uh, parameter in the notion of matrix. So for all practical purposes, so if the retina are heavy and or, or not, so again we can just consider this operator. So and in particular we can concentrate on the neutrino uh, size of the disease affecting the new mass and that's as I said in the asymmetric matrix. Sector here, so in usual, the 
And actually, if I was happy with it, I can write it in this way as a diagonal term. And then, to uh, unit elements on the left and the right, we need to think of things that are on form. Uh, <coughs> well, this one, since it is a symmetric matrix, I can write it, I can diagonalize it via a, 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 a single matrix. Has to be theorized by a one matrix B. I hope that you can use it by standard convention. Yes? Okay, so <clears throat> now if we want to go to the basis uh, where uh, why, why the electron you can is a yap and the electron you can is a yap, and what we have to do is to rotate L into uh, So when we go to the mass against state basis of, of the electron, here we have one P diagonal, and here what we have? Well, we have here, well, remember the equation here is that transpose of what is and transpose, and so we have two left transpose, three left, and this, and here we have. Transpose, and this is conventionally called to the PMMS matrix, that is something measurable now. Uh, this is called PMMS starter. Okay? Uh, well, and if this is PMMS starter, this is this is this is transpose of PMMS start. Okay? Why we did this uh, canvas annotation? But simply because, okay, so this is, if you want, this is the neutrino mass matrix in the in so called interaction basis. So, in the basis where the charge electrons are diagonal, okay, so you want the interaction is, is defined by, by a, a charge electron. So, if I have my The mass against the basis, then what I have to do is I have to well, to, to, to the mass against the basis. That's my R simply. Left, not more. So we can eliminate only three phases. 
so we are in the three. Okay, so tuning the basis of you buy, you do, and, and you take. And so this, this matrix has two more phases with respect to the, to the uh, <coughs> second phase. So the, the, the usual parameters mm -hmm. is the following. The U is written with two phases, it's called Majorana phases, because this is the GQ peculiarity of the fact that this is a related to a Majorana mass matrix, times we want a U in an S. Direct type that is exactly like the second, second matrix. Okay, so we have two diagonal phases that we cannot rotate because here the diagonal phases matters because we have a matrix which is uh, major type, and then we have something which is exactly like the second matrix. Okay, with the standard three missing angle and the, what is called the direct phase because it is there also in the case of the direct mass matrix. Okay. So how, how we measure this, how we measure this is, is very simple, by the, the best, uh, the only way that we do that is via oscillation experiment. Oscillation experiment are an experiment where all the neutrinos are produced in the interaction system, are typically produced in weak interaction where when the weak interaction will produce a, a, a charge electron of flavor I, together with the neutrino of I, but by when I be defined by the electron state. Okay, so for instance, in the sun, the fusion reaction we produce electron neutrinos, okay, and so we would have to, to look at the probability that the neutrino of flavor I, okay, because of the flavor I took now alpha the the uh we the flavor indices becomes uh, so this we produce with some interaction in the decay, then we detect it again as a flavor like I said, for instance, because it's the scattering of a neutrino in some big detector that will use an electron. So, so again we detect the flavor if it is a new one than an electron. And of course, during this if it travels, the, the neutrino no alpha is U alpha i the neutrino mass I is state I, so the probability, the amplitude in alpha going to U theta is U alpha I. Now if we have the, in the, the simple case of free propagation, and then I need to, to detect it, so here I need I theta U dagger. So I have to project now on so the opposite, I have to project the mass against the flavor against the okay. So this is the probability of it. But it's the amplitude of a neutrino of type alpha becoming a neutrino type beta and traveling as a plane wave. Okay? Now what is this pi? What <coughs> well very good really uh, let me be careful. To make a very precise description of this phenomena, one should really use a wave path, okay? Because uh, uh, I mean, we never produce really plain waves of the three. Okay? Uh, however, to an excellent accuracy, what we do is to produce is if one does the, the, the wave path treatment, if we produce an arduino locally, okay, and this arduino packet travels, but to an excellent accuracy, we typically produce an arduino even if they are in a superposition of mass and state in the same moment, uh, in a given interaction, the momentum is, is conserved. And, um, and in the case, we can treat them as plain wave because we produce the, 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 the interaction of on a, in a uh, quite sufficient uh, amount of time that, that, that we can treat it as, as, a, as a plain wave. And then when the neutrino travel, for the phenomena we are interested, they travel essentially at the speed of light, okay, and for a time that is not enough to add the coherence. Of course, given the two are different masses, if you waste enough time, at some point, uh, one neutrino with the largest mass will travel faster than the other one, then at some point there will be a coherence, so there will be no any more interference effects. However, for particular purposes, you know the phenomena which are interesting, like the oscillation of the neutrino produced by the sun, the two neutrinos travel so close in velocity 
that uh, we can treat them as really prime waves when they reach our detector and interfere. So what we do here, the, the approximation that one has to do is the following. Okay, so we use the same spatial momentum. Then we have the energy, and then what, what, what we do for, for the energy, that depends on the mass. So the energy is square root of the square plus square. So this is the first approximation is p. This is of p plus p. Okay. So this this is the factor that is around because it's the fact the oscillation term that depends on the mass of the tree. Okay. So in practice here we have something that is proportional to the we can take away that, that factor here. Such that one of the two is very close to us. So, 
less regulated, but more or less assume that one of the mixing angles is small, so we can concentrate only on a oscillation of two, of two flavor. So what is this? This is just a, you see, a, is a, and it becomes a, a, a two by two wave. So this is a, if, if, if we were in a two by two system, so this would be the oscillation of, say, alpha one point two beta two. So this is a one two two two. So this is generally the structure of a, of a two by two mixing method. This is sine cosine. So this is we call it sine theta times cosine theta in the in the limit where we have just two by two oscillation. Okay, and that's why. Just call it the band because I have only one. And so the probability is proportional to this object. On the square, and so the probability is just sine square to theta. I should be the factor one four, but this is one times this is a sine square of. So you get, you get the, the, the famous, this is the standard formula for the, what you can work in the limit of two flavors of oscillation, so we have the probability of see, alpha going to beta, if we were only on a two flavor system, is just the proportion to the sine of the twice the mixing angle, and then this factor here, and of course this t is usually replaced by L, which is the in the limit where the neutrinos travel the velocity of light, okay, here you can place a T with the distance from the place where we produce the neutrino here with alpha and the place where we detect the neutrino. Okay. You see that the distance are, are since this left hand square it's, it's very small, but with very big distances to, to you see the oscillation, otherwise this uh, sign term is zero. Okay, just to give you a feeling of, of the numbers. So this is why the only clear evidence we have about the masses are on this delta m square, not on the single bar of the masses. And this is an important point. Okay? So we have basically two types of, of well now we have three types of oscillation evidence in the experiment. The first one historically was oscillation in the, in the Okay, because of the atmospheric neutrinos, so the film produced by interaction in the atmosphere, so that the, the length of the signal at least gets to the size of the earth. Then we have seen oscillation from the sun. So the, the, the light distance was much bigger if the, the two frequencies that were observed with this one, so the, the atmospheric the, the, the frequency observed in the atmospheric uh, uh, experiment is uh, It's about electron square, while that one measured in the solar experiment is Solar, not uh, one, two, and two, three, because we don't know okay, what is one, what is two. Of course, we also measure the corresponding angles. And here, we measure an angle which is really is atmospheric, which is really 45 degree or 5 to the fourth, so that sine of two theta is. It's maximum, while here the angle is uh, around 30 degrees. So, this was the actual integration till a uh, couple of years ago. Now, and so, very uh, few years ago, as we finally we measured different type of mixing, which actually is uh, related still to the same frequency, but it's a different, uh, different mixing, which is the 1 3 mixing. So, finally, we measured the third angle. To the one thing which is very small, but it's quite it's point one five. So to a good accuracy, we have really two systems, two, two uh, uh, let, let me write the mass matrix to be clear. So 
Sobre el primer sobre x, no vamos a hacer en esto. Cosine en sine, de cosine en sine, vamos a hacer aquí. Some kind 
that one divided by electric scale, some unknown scale, and some unknown time. Then, if I also assume in the limit where g equal 1, in the limit where I take here the third eigenvalue, I can fix what this scale lambda is. Okay. In this case, I find that this lambda corresponds to 10 to the 15 Of course, this has to be taken with a lot of scale because maybe this cutting is more, much more. If it's 10 to minus 3, then it increases uh, the, the scale corresponding to the magnitude. Not only, but also we don't know exactly if this is correct. Indeed, I told you that we have these two possibilities, but I don't know what is zero here. Okay. So zero. Could, it could be that actually these three are all very degenerate, okay, and they essentially degenerate because the, so when I compute the mass difference, uh, I, I cannot neglect that. Uh, uh, this, this relation is not equal to. However, they are bound on the upper value of the new masses from uh, uh, the upper value of the new masses from, for instance, from the simple kinematics from the. Either decay, okay, if you did not have sufficient mass, you should see it in the spectrum of the decay action. This is how you know, a neutrino was postulated by the existence of a neutrino was postulated by Pauli because uh, when looking at beta decays, there was some missing energy, so it's a okay, must be a particle. Now, if this particle has a mass, then you see if when you look at the energy of the electron, okay, the energy of the electron, the maximum energy of the electron is. Uh, Related to the, let's say, the difference of the mass in the nuclei minus the mass of the neutrino. So it, it, it goes like this if there are no neutrino and uh, no mass, if the mass uh, cannot be seen by the energy conservation. So from this type of measurement, it's called endpoint measurement, one finds that the, the neutrinos have to be below, well below one electron volt. Okay? So there cannot be a too big gap here, but still there is a, a gap to this one. Okay, so I think uh, we can we can stop here uh, for today and we'll continue tomorrow.